first of all is how you actually came across um, the reason I jumped in, in the first place. So I understand it was your, your wife came across it first? Yeah, yeah. Uh, through a certain well-known online booksellers, Japanese... Um, Division, um, but of course the book is available at Waterstones, uh, a physical bookshop, um, and let's not mention taxes. Um, but yeah, so she found it, uh, ordered it. A number of uh, other sort of Japanese international marriage couples with uh, a son or daughter with autism had posted on uh, that well-known online bookseller's uh, site. Is there an English translation? Because this is great. Uh, that uh, piqued my wife's curiosity. She ordered it and started reading out the good bits and then she ended up reading out the whole book. Uh, we then uh, thought, well, not sure if there's any tr translation of this. Uh, let's just do a clandestine copy for our sons, carers and teachers because uh, the knowledge is really helpful and certainly helped us become more useful interactors with our son. Uh, my agent then my publishers got to hear about this little side project we were working on and then kind of went legal and investigated if there was a translation there wasn't. Uh, and so we got permission to translate it and here I am. I was shocked by the level of self-awareness that he, he possesses and, and more about the questions he seems to ask of himself and this self-reflection. Um, what was the most surprising aspect of reading that, of reading his book? I had that surprise too. I kind of, oh my God, people with autism can actually analyse, uh, use humour, yeah. possess emotional intelligence. But either the book is a fake, which I know it isn't, because I've seen him on video and on film do it, uh, or we are constantly underplaying and underestimating the potential of people with autism. And that's what I'm going to take. Uh, that's what I reckon is going on. Uh, so... That was the first in, initial shock that I've sort of constantly been underestimating what my own son is thinking. It is because they can't communicate it, we assume it's not there. That's sort of, that's not their paucity of imagination, that's us neurotypical lots paucity of imagination, I feel. Um, and if the book can do something towards sort of changing the narrative in its own modest way about uh, the intelligence and imaginative potential of people with autism, then great, I, I hope it will, and I hope it outsells everything I've ever written. If you know there's this fully developing human being inside there, and not a bundle of needs and problems and meltdowns and mishaps uh, that's sort of destroying your home life, uh, stopping you going on holiday, if, you know, uh-uh, there's much more to it than that. Uh, this sort of kid knows that this is happening, and it's much more conscious of what's going on, it just can't express it. If you know that, then your interaction is going to be really different. Uh, you think, well, first, you, know, you start respecting them as a human being rather than just sort of relying on parental needs to take care of uh, the human being in question, uh, because that's really what they are, uh, and they deserve it. And the more of that they get, the more respect and consideration and the more they are treated as if uh, the potential uh, for much more for the, than what is visible is there, long torture sentence, sorry, uh, then that will help them. A uh, really fundamental example is language. If I know that my son is much more able to internally process language than he can express it or use it. Sort of like my own speech impediment, but to a much greater degree. But if, if I know that that linguistic faculty is there, then, then I use it much, much more when I'm speaking with him. So if he uh, takes off his socks and walks off, leaving them on, on, on the kitchen floor, whereas previously I might have, no, oh, well, he has autism, what do you expect? I'll take them over and put them in the washing machine or something. Now, hang on, oi, 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 socks, pick them up. Uh, why don't you put them on the table? Or why don't you take them, put them into the washing machine? Go on, you can do it. Uh, so he's hearing much more language. Uh, and the day when he can start using it in a more confident way uh, comes nearer. He, he already is. I mean, that might have happened anyway for all I know. I can't, I can't, I can't kind of compare him to... 
how it would be if I weren't interacting with him that way, but I can't believe it isn't helping a lot. We did about four drafts. Uh, first was by my wife, she sort of did the heavy lifting. Her, her English is much better than my Japanese. Uh, then I sort of went through that uh, and, and um, anything that we felt needed fixing, I fixed. Then I went through a, a third time, to then translated into a 13-year-old voice. My brief to myself was, was very simple. If Naoki Higashida uh, were Nick Hobson from Essex or something, how would this sound? Uh, and so I just tried to write like that. He's a bright, articulate 13-year-old kid who happens to have severe autism, but can type uh, and can get this out. Uh, if he were British, what would he sound like? So uh, I, I, I allow him a bit of high-level vocabulary because my 11-year-old can use the word metaphor and knows what it means. Uh, so pretty good guide. I can go up a few notches from that too. However, I try to keep the voice authentic. The Japanese is my guide, really. I mean, if he says honto ni, like really, or honestly, then I put that in there. Uh, so needed a certain novelistic eye maybe to get that, but, but sort of no, uh, I think my translators have a much harder time <laughs> translating me. It, it did sort of just realise, uh, I always suspected my translators are much smarter than I am, but now I know they are, they really are. Uh, it's a noble, noble, undersung vocation is translating. How old is your son? He's seven years old now, ten years old. Well, I, I wondered whether, do you think, you, or maybe you already are, do you ever encourage him to write? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> sort of the Homer Simpson responses. <laughs> sort of finding it. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, it's not always possible for every autistic kid. Of course, it isn't. Uh, it's a vast, mysterious realm, and even with our own son, there's not a hundred percent overlap between Nauki's experiences and perceptions and our sons. Where autism stops and personality starts, who knows? So no, there isn't a hundred percent. Overlap, but 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 if he has this fact in common that actually you know he, he sort of already is uh, the iPad is 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 the biggest heaven sent gift or other uh, iPad type devices uh, it, they are wonderful the software is so great so well thought for special needs and and and, and actually non special needs specific just spelling programs you know. There's a D and an O and a G scattered around the page, pitch for dog, you've got to drag them down. It says it as you're putting it, D, O, G, dog. You can change the accent. You know, they are wonderful. Uh, in a way, you know, it's, uh, I will plug a particular program, it's expensive, but the ProLoQ uh, app is just amazing. And he's writing with that already. You know, it, it's sort of, it's within, parameters of the target sentence, but because of that I can't say he isn't already writing, because he kind of is in, in, in the context of this thing, and they use it at school as well, and uh, iPads are good news.